So this is where Pharaoh is? Should be. I wasn't able to see him when we came to the desert, but I think this is where we can meet him. I hope nothing bad will happen. What if he suddenly attacks us? I can't make any guarantees. I don't think we'll have a say in the matter. That just means we need to do our best so nothing bad happens. Carol, are you okay? No, I'm not okay. I should go. Pharaoh sure did pick a bleak place to live in, don't you think? They say this area used to be covered in lush greenery. Why did it turn into this rocky desert? Hmm, I don't know that much. Estelle, are you really going to meet him? Even though you could be killed? Yes, I've already made peace with this decision. Rita, you've been acting a little funny ever since hearing Judy's story on the ship. Do you have a problem with meeting Pharaoh? I just think it'll be hard on her to hear what he has to say. But it's too late to turn back now. We've come this far after all. He doesn't seem to be here. Maybe he's off somewhere taking a nap. Pharaoh? You are here, aren't you? Ah! Insipid poison. You appear before me at last. So you are here. Is that how you greet all your guests, Pharaoh? By calling them names? For what reason have you come to me? Surely you are aware that I could end your existence with a mere thought. <laughs> you talk pretty big, don't you? Well, if you really want to fight, I'd hate to disappoint you. Yuri, no! Everyone, please wait! Estelle! Pharaoh, please hear what I have to say. Does death hold no fear for you, little one? For you gaze now into the mouth of death itself. I am afraid, but I'm even more afraid of dying without knowing who I really am. Bellius told me I needed to meet you to learn about my destiny. I have to know just what that destiny is. I understand that I am a threat to the Entelikea, but you said that I am a poison to this world. What is this power I have? Just who is the child of the full moon? If it is true that my existence cannot be tolerated, then it's okay if I have to die. But I at least deserve to know why it is I have to die. Please tell me. I beg of you. There was a time when this was a verdant land, sheltered by the blessing of an air crene. So there was an air crene here. But what happened? Why did it change? What you see are the results of too much air and its aftermath. As to why the air ran rampant, the answer lies with the poison brought by the Child of the Full Moon. Huh? The power of the Child of the Full Moon stimulates the air crene more than any Blastia. Huh? Blastia convert air into energy by way of a formula. So if Estelle can use her healing arts without the aid of any Blastia, she must possess a formula in her very being that lets her convert air into energy. Judith was searching for Blastia that used a particular kind of formula. So, this special formula Estelle has must also consume massive amounts of air, which causes the air crene to become more active and pump out more air than they should. I had hoped my hypothesis would have been wrong. Then... I... It is as she has said. With each use of her power, the Child of the Full Moon uses far more air than the Blastia. In so doing, the imbalance of air in this world is furthered. For the planet, such an existence can only be called a poison. So you just wipe it out then? Little quick to judge, aren't you, Pharaoh? 
This problem concerns the entire planet, and she is its cause. To do nothing would be unparalleled folly. If the problem's with Estelle, then it's for us to solve. That's right. We can't let anyone else handle it. The gravity of this situation is beyond your grasp. You don't honestly think that everything's gonna be all sunshine and rainbows if Estelle dies, do you? It would at least eliminate one problem. Pharaoh, at Heliord I stopped myself. And again at Dawngrest I stopped you. What I thought was a Blastia turned out to be a human. Before I realized it, I had lost my way. I never thought this child could be as great a danger as you had said. And due to your confusion, I granted you the time necessary to see things as they are. As a result, my sister Belius is now lost to me. Enough. This power will bring only ruin. Hmm, not sure I understand all this, but if her power's the problem, why can't she just not use it? There can be no guarantee she will not try to use the power. That's true. She does have trouble turning a blind eye to things happening around her. Someday she will surely use her power to help someone. However, as long as she keeps that spirit of compassion, she cannot only be seen as harmful. She is not like Ablastia. I know that you can feel the difference. Compassion alone will not save this world. Listen, Pharaoh. I get that you've thought all this through with everybody's best interest in mind, but why doesn't that world have a place for Estelle? It is sometimes necessary to remove a part to save the whole. I don't buy that for a second. What makes you so high and mighty that you're the one to decide who gets cut and who doesn't? We have endured the anxiety of existence for far greater a span than you can conceive. Such words mean nothing from those who call this world home for but a fleeting moment. Pharaoh, please, listen. The important thing is finding a way to stop the excessive air, correct? We still have time left to search for such a thing. Judith! And if... If the effects of Estelle's power reach their absolute limit, I will kill her as promised. You should have no complaint with this. Hey, Judith, are you serious? I'm sure Brave Vesperia will come up with something before that happens, right? What? I... um... Yeah, yeah, of course we will! Well, score one for Judith. So that settles it. If we humans are to blame for Estelle's problem and bringing on the apocalypse, then it's up to us to make things right. If we give it all we've got and still blow it, you can slow roast us on a grill for all I care. You have changed. If you were still as before. Have I? That is nice to hear. Very well. Be ever mindful, though, that time is fleeting. Wait! If the formulas are causing the excessive air, then there must have been times when this happened in the past. I mean, the Blastia were a product of an ancient civilization. There exist those who have inherited the sins of the past. If any yet can speak of what occurred in the days of old, it is they. He's gone! Bye-bye! Um, I... Thanks for everything, Yuri. Judith, you too. No problem. But hey... What? It's okay if I have to die? What the hell was that? I'm sorry. I don't want to hear that again. I'm sorry. Man, I was really worried there for a while. We were pretty lucky that bruiser was in a mood for conversation. Poor Raven's heart can't handle that sort of stuff anymore. You're pretty gutless for an old man. Jeez, Patty, you've really got nerves of steel. If he really wanted to kill Estelle, 
he'd have attacked us immediately. And that's what I can't figure out. I imagine Pharaoh was conflicted as well. He hid himself from us in the desert to see just what we were made of. Huh. Maybe he wasn't as bad as we thought after all. You might be right. I get the feeling he'd do whatever's necessary when push comes to shove. That sounds like you. Maybe. But what are we going to do, Yuri? You heard what he said. We're going to fix the problems the air's causing, and that's all. That's easier said than done. We're pretty much at square one, you know. Mm-hmm. And no one wants to be at square one. There's no doubt that the formulas are related somehow to the air getting used up. We need to find out about the ancient Blastia, and if they went berserk or not. If we had that kind of information, it might give us a clue. Ask those who have inherited the sins of the past about the days of old. Or at least that's what Pharaoh said. The Critia were the ones to invent the Blastia. In other words, we need to ask a Critian who is still familiar with the old stories. Yeah, the Critia are often credited as the inventors of the Blastia. There isn't much left of the Critian city of Timza, though. It'd be a lot easier if there were more cities. The hidden city of Miorzo. It is far older than Temza, and the birthplace of the Kritya. The first Blastia also originated there. Really? Well, what do you know? You wouldn't happen to know where this Miorzo might be, would you, darling? Hmm. I've heard that name somewhere. There was a Critian in Ospio. I'm sure they mentioned something about it. Do you think that person might still be there? Well, there's no harm in checking it out. Judith, are you coming with us? I should. We still have the issue of the guild to straighten out. So, to Ospio then. Wow! The hourglass is really amazing! The enemies just stop moving! Yeah, certainly makes it easier to win battles. You can get ready for what's next, attack enemies, change battle formation. And if we're having trouble running away from enemies, this makes it a cinch. Oh, and it even lets us keep enemies from running away. It's seriously awesome. Hourglass! Ugh. Personally, I find this way easier. Uh. Be gone soon enough.
Money seems to disappear before you know it. No, it disappears because you use it. Sure, but if you only use a little at a time, you don't realize how much you're spending. I guess we've been spending a little too much. What do you mean? We need to spend more! Really? But why? The more gold we spend, the more it comes back to us. And it brings its friends, too. R really How interesting. Huh? Rita, your name's on this money. Exactly! I've been writing my name on our gold so we'll know when it comes back to us. And when it does come back, I bet it'll have doubled at least. So go on, use it! <laughs> what a lovely little fairy tale. This looks easy. Let me at him! Tap! Yeah, yeah. New moon Take blade! Tap. Drag it over! Take this! Reaper knot! New power that tries soul yeah. shine! Well, so What's the secret of your strength? I don't know. Maybe I just have fun fighting. Cool! I'll do that too! It's been another long day. Let's save the manhunt for tomorrow. Uh, I second that. Oh, how long's it been since I've slept in a proper bed? Well, I suppose we can all stay at my place. Wait, there's something I want to take care of first. You mean me? Carol? This is a guild thing. Best for us not to get involved. I've thought about it a lot. What we should do, like, as a guild. And I realized, we have to figure out a few things if we're going to keep this guild going. It sounds like you've decided what we should do. Well, we said it before. The most important thing is obeying the guild's laws. Those who break the laws suffer strict punishment, even if they're friends or family. They say that's the source of a guild's pride. Yes. So what I'm thinking is, we all have to receive punishment. What do you mean? I didn't know that Judith was fighting for our planet all on her own. But even though I didn't know, I still failed to help a fellow guild member. So I gotta accept my punishment. Yuri? Me? Maybe you were trying to follow your own path, but you still kept things hidden from us. There's no way that can be for the good of the guild. Well... So you gotta be punished, too. Now he's stretching it. The laws are important. What if someone does the right thing, but still breaks the law? Should they be punished? To be honest, I just don't know yet. So that's why we should all just accept our punishment and start over from scratch. What do you think? I can't promise I won't have my secrets in the future. Well, if that's the way it is... If you can't trust us, then there's nothing you can do. That would be my fault. And what if I destroy a Blastia that our guild was planning on using again? That would be breaking the law that says I should act in the interest of the guild. But you'd also be acting for the sake of the world. Guilds aren't there just so people can obey their laws. I think we can let that slide. Um, doesn't that sort of make your laws meaningless? 
<laughs> I've never heard of a guild like this before. But you've got me interested, I'll give you that much. There's no need to be such a stickler for the rules. Gotta be more relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, you're just full of surprises. I had thought plenty about myself and what I should be doing, but I might not have considered how my actions would affect you guys. This is a way of settling things I didn't even realize existed. I... I just wanted to keep traveling with all of you. I just wanted each of our own paths to be the same as Brave Asperia's. <laughs> Sounds all right with me. You heard the man, Judy. I guess that's where we stand. You really are some of the oddest people I've ever met. But I suppose I can manage to put up with you. All right, then. One more time. Brave Vesperia, fall out! They're just making it up as they go, aren't they? Is that all a guild is? <laughs> The Don ran his guild just a teensy bit differently. There's something beautiful about this way, though. Brave Vesperia sure is nice. Do you want to join too, Patty? Can't right now. Oh, yeah. You still have to get your memory back. So, what about the punishment? Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. Um... Looks like you guys are on Critian Researcher Detail. We'll be relaxing at my place. Hey, why do you get to decide? Excuse me? Did I hear a complaint? <laughs> no, ma'am. No. Uh-uh. Carol, were you thinking by yourself this whole time about what to do with Judy? Yeah, it was pretty much all I thought about after we left Nordopolica. That... and about what you did to Rago and Kumor. Really? It's nice to hear you thought about me that much, even when I wasn't around. Yeah, I wasn't sure at first what was right, what was wrong. I think I have the Dawn to thank for setting me straight. Without the Dawn's last words, I never would have found answers to the questions I had. You gotta stand on your own two feet. Yeah. I was thinking about what that meant. And before I knew it, I wasn't thinking about what was right. I was thinking about what I want to do. And that helped you decide what to do with the guild. Yeah. So here's to fresh starts. Yeah. To fresh starts. <laughs>